Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather, see what the latest is in this forecast. And it really all hinges on this cattle for this deep California trough that is right now digging its way south across the west coast and will eventually be moving in to California, but it is slow. It is so slow, in fact, and it is such a big trough that it's probably going to be like a catcher's mitt. It's probably going to send lobes of moisture into the interior Rockies and in the process probably absorb a couple of cold fronts coming out of the Pacific Northwest. So there are some other storm systems behind this thing, but it's going to be such a slow mover that may end up may end up absorbing them. That may cut down on some of the totals down the road. Um, it looks to me like Utah will have a couple of shots of snow, one on 1116 and another shot 1118, 1119, Colorado 1116 and 1119 and 1120. So all of those things we'll cover in this forecast. First stop is water vapor satellite imagery. Let me just show you this deep trough. So here it is. And it's taking up a lot of real estate. There's another big low up here, Alaska, and another one back here. And there is one riding the southern branch over Hawaii. Well, the point of all this is that this is all being directed down here. That's where the jet's running. So everything is swirling around this area of low pressure. Um, and it's going to be slow. The deeper the trough, the slower the movement in the atmosphere. Everything stacks up like, a, like I-25 or a major highway at rush hour. So these lows that are coming up over the top, you know, they may be able to run up over the top, but this is going to be sending lobes of energy and moisture in ahead of it. So it's probably going to catch both of these low pressures. And that's going to have an impact down the road. Let me just show you a little forecast animation here. Radar satellite. The current state of affairs right there. Here we are tomorrow morning. Look at California. First lobe of moisture gets spun in. Here we are Wednesday morning at 6. And look what's happening. A couple of things right here to illustrate my point. So while the big low is still moving into the coast, it's sending energy in. Look at the Pacific Northwest. You can almost see on the diagonal a cold front coming in. So the two of them, there is going to be interplay. And here is this, there it is. See, that's your snow. The interplay between the cold front and that low ejecting energy in will affect the Tetons, the Wasatch, there's 11, 16 in the morning, and then eventually that afternoon and night in Colorado in the central and northern mountains. And then that moves away. And then we're going to have to wait for 11, 18 through 11, 20. And you see what happens right here. It's 11.18. So the low ejects out of Colorado, moves through the southern tier, and, and it starts to snow in Utah and Colorado. But watch what happens. So by the end of that period, that low is still moving through Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, but look to the Pacific Northwest. Next storm system, cold front comes in, and the low moving through the four corners is so slow that the low coming out of the Pacific Northwest, that cold front will probably catch it. And it's probably going the two will probably mesh over Colorado. Um, sometime around 11, 19, 11, 20, 11, 21. Very interesting forecast, complex, um, and, and it keeps things, keeps things changing. Let me show you the, the jet. So here it is. You can see the big trough. Everything's swirling around, coddling that low pressure off the coast of California on 11, 15. Um, here is 11, 19. Really powerful jet pattern coming out of the Pacific Northwest and now, in the morning update I did, it wasn't so bent from north to south. It was more kind of west to northwest, and it still favored the Pacific Northwest and B.C. Not this. With this update, if this occurs, it will not favor the Pacific Northwest in B.C. It, the jet's too high. It's too amplified. All the energy's going to run around, probably around Banff, down through Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and into Colorado. There's 1119. Everything's dumping into that big low. It's going to spiral around, so um, that energy will eventually catch that big low, and everything will mesh over Colorado. And here is the pattern on 11:22. That low is long gone. You can see another little ripple coming through the Pacific Northwest, BC, and Banff. And that's the way it looks right now. Here's how it affects totals. First period's very light. There's not much there. Very light totals across the lower 48. A lot of that happens on 11:16. So a few inches in the Wasatch and a few in Colorado mainly on 1116. The second period is more interesting, but with the amplification of that jet going way up in to BC, that spills a lot of the energy down into Colorado and Utah, and you can see potentially a foot or more there. 
through the Wasatch and in parts of Colorado. But you, you'll notice it's, re it's really spotty in Colorado. There's some pockets of magenta where we're going to see a, a foot or more. But you'll notice it tilts towards the Front Range over on the Continental Divide down in the south, down in Cuchara, down in the Wet Mountains and Sand Grace, because if the low spins up over the eastern plains of Colorado, it's going to wrap snow back around and hit those, those pockets. So definitely this, this forecast is not done changing. I think we'll see some interesting things happen tomorrow with this. Um, so tune in for that. But thank you for uh, watching this update. I always appreciate it. Take care.